at Juilliard, I was teaching playwriting and feeling very frustrated about how hard it is to teach someone. And I was in the elevator and it said, uh, master class with Leontine Price, 4 p.m. And I looked and it was 3.59. I said, oh, I'll, that'll cheer me up or take my mind off things. And as soon as it, she walked out, I thought, this is so theatrical. Here's one of the great divas of uh, my lifetime, you know, teaching, uh, saying this is not about me. And uh, of course, we're more interested in Leontine Price and the student. I said, this is such a theatrical setting. And then another two or three years later, I was at an, an event um, where actors were doing different scenes from my plays. And Nathan Lane did a speech from Lisbon Traviata. And Zoe Caldwell came out and did a scene from A Perfect Ganesh. And just like that, I said, master class, Maria Callas. I wrote the first line of the play on my program. No applause. And I wrote the last line. Well, that's that. Then I thought, all I have to do now is fill it in for two and a half hours in between. Not hearing any consonants. You're singing in Sanskrit. I'm only getting vowels. Uh, words mean something. Vowels are the inarticulate sounds our hearts make. Oh, consonants give them specific meaning. Oh, se una volta sola. Hear the difference? She was, for me, the greatest singer in my lifetime. And I, I, I know why I think that. I found her voice incredibly beautiful. I loved all the different colors in it. It's an unconventional voice. But what I mainly like about her is that she sounds like she's speaking, not singing. So many singers, they sort of sing, and she's like just being. So when you see uh, an opera with Collis, and I was lucky enough to have heard her quite a few times, I felt it was happening for the first time. It seemed spontaneous. Who are you, Sophie de Palma? You've told us your name, but who are you? Tears will get you nowhere, darling. Not in the theater, not in real life, certainly not with me. <laughs> no one cared how many nights I cried myself to sleep. I sang Norma better than anyone had in years. And I interpolated the high F at the end of the first act. <laughs> That's all people cared about. When you're fat and ugly, and I'm not saying you're either one of those things, <laughs> you better have a couple of high Fs you can interpolate into your life. And when we talked about doing master class here, I said my first and maybe only choice at this moment that I can think of is Tyne Daly, and if you can get her, then let's make that one of the three plays we do. A singer has to know his assets, too. It's a, it's a business, after all. Let's never forget that. Domination, collaboration, assets. What are you? You mean my name? No, I mean your voice. <laughs> I'm a tenor, couldn't you tell? A tenor? Yeah. Grandio. God save us sopranos from you tenors. And that's the only tenor joke you're going to hear from me. It's a demanding role, and uh, what I think time brings to it uh, is a ferociousness. She's what I call a take-no-prisoner kind of actress. She plants her feet, and she's there. She's a force of nature. I have always admired her and always wanted to work with her. And, 